All right, let's start with the camera. I prefer to use the Wisner 4x5 field camera. Amazing camera for capturing action. Um, this, <laughs> I can't even keep a straight face. I, I did start my career using this camera um, for landscapes, not athletes. Hey everyone, I'm James, but most people just call me by my last name, Quants. I'm a photographer, so you put the two together and it's Quants Photo. Not sure why I needed to explain that since it's pretty obvious, but anyway, uh, I guess it's been about seven years since my last YouTube video, but I figured, you know, what the heck, let's give this a go. Now, I'm gonna try and make these a little more frequently, so if there is a topic you'd like me to cover, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. For those of you who haven't seen any of my work and are unfamiliar with what I do, you can check out my website at quantsphoto.com. There, you can see I'm a commercial advertising photographer. A lot of my work is focused within the realm of sports slash entertainment, and I've really been blessed with the opportunity to have some of the world's greatest athletes in front of my camera. That being said, as you know, general photographic principles apply, of course, to all photography. Oh, and the video from around seven years ago, 2013, I think, uh, it still applies to what I do today. It's a behind the scenes look at a photo shoot that gives you somewhat of an idea of what goes into a day of work. It also shows some of the end result with quick glimpses of the Photoshop work on the back end. So I'll try to figure out how to link that somewhere over here. Now, obviously, I'm much more used to being behind the camera, so I'm hoping to get better with this on-camera stuff with a little practice. In the meantime, I hope you'll bear with me and find something of value from these videos. Okay, so let's pretend that we're recently off the phone with a client, and I'm starting the process of figuring out what I'll need on a shoot based off of what the shot list might look like. This would also include lighting, but today I'm just going to focus on the camera case. But hey, if you're interested in a lighting scenario video, please feel free to let me know in the comments below again, and I'll see about making that happen. Since I do get asked a lot though, let's run through my camera case and see what I might have in it to pull off a commercial shoot in 2020. I'll use the shoot I had recently for a sports drink company with a NASCAR driver they sponsor. The shoot was pretty dynamic as we were gonna be shooting both with natural light, uh, the sun, and controlled strobe lighting. The client is wanting images that will have my subject both near and far from the camera. That, uh, that's encompassing close portraits with the product and further away environmental walking styled images with both the product and the car. Speaking of the car, I would also be taking clean images of the actual car. So that's a lot to think about. And you know, what would I need to cover all these variables? Well, let's take a look. All right, first of all, as almost a disclaimer, I need to say up front, and we've all heard it, but it's not the gear that makes the photographer or the photo. And I'm just showing this as more of a lesson in what I feel I need to pull off a shoot like the one I had a few weeks ago. You can substitute different brands of camera makers, lenses, strobes, etc. The point is to be prepared for anything that might come up and also be comfortable with what you work with in order to exude that confidence that is so important on set with both the talent in front of the camera and the client's agency that have hired you for the job and who are all probably standing around watching you work. All right. Hey, so I wanted to jump in here real quick to acknowledge the fact that I've got some colors that aren't matching between clips, among other things. Anyway, I filmed this over a couple of days and switched from InLog to ProRes about halfway through, so balancing at this point is a little above my pay grade. Just want to throw that out there. This stuff is crazy, but I'm still learning. Stick with me. Now back to the action. 
If you're interested, I'll try and leave links for everything I cover down in the description below. All right, I'll start with the camera, which for me is the Nikon D850. Currently, it's the best camera I've found for meeting my needs of quick, low light focus, frames per second, and resolution, just to name a few attributes that separate it from its predecessor, the Nikon D810, which I used to use. And just so you know, I always have at least two camera bodies on a shoot like this. I have two bodies for a couple reasons. One is in case something happens to one of the cameras, I'll have a backup. Unfortunately, I've been on shoots and I've had a camera fail and had to resort to my backup to finish the job. Uh, the key is when something like this happens, just you, know, you try and figure out what's going on um, and then calmly switch bodies out. This has happened a couple of times and a shoot would have been lost without a backup. So it's very, very important. Uh, the second reason I'll have two cameras is when I need to have two different lenses mounted and ready to go. Last week we were moving around uh, the racetrack and in some cases I was further from the subject and wanted to compress the image or the background. So I would have a long lens and other times I was closer to the subject and opting for something wider and more dramatic. These in instances would happen very quickly and with a sponsored athlete, your time is very limited. So it's just easier to switch cameras than it would be to continually have to change out uh, lenses. Okay, and on my D850 bodies, um, battery grips. All with the D850, I always have battery grips for both of my cameras for several reasons. First, just the extra surface area uh, for when I'm switching from horizontal to vertical. Um, when I'm shooting action, it also gives me a couple extra frames per second and the bursts when I need it and longer battery life of the EL battery. So I've got two of these um, batteries that I keep on one on each camera. If I'm using one primary camera, I'll just take the battery from the other one. Um, and so when it comes to batteries as well, I'm in the school that you can never have too many batteries, so I also pack at least two additional uh, lithium batteries on the trays that slide into the battery grips. And if for some reason something funky is going on with the grips, I can also pull these out of the trays and take the grip off and insert this in the body and keep on rolling. Um, and just kind of talking about while we're talking about cameras, I know that mirrorless cameras are making tremendous strides. Um, I'm also, I'm actually filming this video with the Z6, an Nikon Z6, but I just don't quite have the comfort level with them yet to make this to a complete switch to in my kit. Uh, like I mentioned before, for me, it's super important to have familiar, familiarity with my gear. So I don't have to think about much more than just getting the shot. Okay, while we're still on cameras and the camera bodies, let me slide these over here. Um, I did pack a camera strap for this shoot. Uh, this is one from Peak Designs. I'm not a big fan of you know straps and stuff. I'm more of a kind of a free shooter. Um, not don't really use tripods that often either. Um, but they have these dongles now that it's just a great little system. They make it so easy to pop on and off the camera. Uh, that I've been able to uh, adopt the system uh, when I feel like it's going to help me out. Uh, while I've also got this camera out here, I also uh, like to have an L bracket on one of my camera bodies just to be prepared for using a tripod if that situation does present itself. On this shoot I've been referencing, I did end up using a tripod for the clean car images so I could bracket exposures without camera movement while you know, using, we actually use natural light. So I was able to take several exposures and combine those in post for the final image. Um, all right, let's move on to lenses. My main workhorse is the 24 to 70 uh, 2.8, just a great all around lens. When I need to go wide, I can go wide with this lens. I can get in fairly tight for portrait work. Uh, these jobs with limited time force me to pretty much work the zoom lenses um, because there just isn't enough time to be switching primes unless I know without a shadow of a doubt what the situation is going to be. Uh, that being said, um, I also like to handhold and move around so you know a prime can limit me in that way um, with some options as well. Um, and then I would have to change lenses once again. So uh, even though I'm 
sitting here crapping on prime lenses. I did pack the uh, 85 1.8. It's just a light, really good um, portrait lens. And, and that I kind of like to have in my bag in case the opportunity presents itself to, to pull it out and, and stick with a set of portraits and a setup. Um, but for this shoot, I pretty much knew that my secondary or second main uh, would be my 70 to 200. Um, 2.8. This is just another fantastic lens for those images that um, you, know, you need to compose a little bit further away. And these, this lens will also compress the background, um, gives kind of a little bit of a different look than this lens here. Um, but between these two on a shoot like I had, I'm pretty well covered. Uh, and like I mentioned, I was going to be outdoors, so I made sure to pack um, a circular polarizer. This gives the images just that extra punch. Uh, and also knew that we'd be working with a car on this shoot, so you can remove reflections and glass and off the paint and all those kind of good things. So it's, it, I always try to keep one of these in my kit. Um, next up are my tethering cables. I always like to tether when possible. Uh, these two, and they are two, uh, cables are from Tether Tools. I like the ones with the right angle attachment. Uh, these just don't stick as far out from the camera and, and uh, it's just less of a chance of them being yanked out of the camera itself. So um, I always, when I can, try to go with the right angle. I mean, I go with it every time because it's the only type of cable that I have anymore. Um, and on this shoot, I knew we'd be moving around a good bit. So also included the tether tool cable extension. Um, this just gives me that extra distance I might need in order to stay tethered as much as possible. On a shoot like this, I've got four to five people from uh, my client, and it just helps to have the images coming live so they can see what I'm capturing and give me live feedback as we shoot. Uh, and I'm, I'm really big on this because I feel it's just so very important to collaborate with your clients as much as you can on set. Um, for those times that I'm shooting, um, straight to card, I've got <clears throat> two uh, card readers. Um, these are the XQD card readers. They go with the D850 and the XQD cards. Um, once again, uh, two in case something goes wrong. Uh, let's see here. And along with the card readers, you need cards. So I carry a Think Tank uh, pouch and you have plenty of room in this case for plenty of memory cards. And what I'll do too is um, when I, I, I try to dump the files um, as often as I can between setups, once the uh, card's been dropped, the files, uh, I'll place it back in the pouch, which gives me yet another backup. Uh, this practice also gives a client a chance to keep up with the file capture so we can continue the creative dialogue during the shoot. Okay, speaking of backups, I've started to carry the Samsung SSDs uh, for end of day backup. These things are absolutely fantastic. And with the USB-C uh, connection, uh, they're super fast. Fortunately, they are starting to come down in price as most things do the longer they're available. I think you can grab the one terabyte version for around 150 bucks or so. Um, they also have these little, these nifty little carrying cases that make a neat little package when you pull it out and start a backup, um, you know, anything to impress the client. Uh, let's see here. Other little things I've got. I always keep a, a gray card. And this has got a white and a black as well. This is in the case that I need to balance uh, the color and post. And, you know, depending on lighting situations, it can be you know, a really, really good thing to have. Uh, on this shoot and then most other shoots, I'm using strobes. So I uh, use the Profoto Air Remotes. Once again, redundancy, I've got two of these. A backup in case something fails in my primary unit. Recently, I was on a shoot and accidentally um, switched to the channel. And with everything going on, it was just easier to take this off the camera and grab my back up and keep rolling. Uh, when we finished that setup, I went back and checked it out and realized I'd mistakenly hit the channel button. 
And uh, it was just something in the moment that I couldn't, couldn't figure out. Uh, and so it was just a lifesaver, just mentally, for me to have this, just to be able to switch it all out. Uh, and I guess, just neater in here, I guess I should just comment on the case itself. Uh, this guy I've had for quite a while, and it shows. Uh, it's a hard Pelican case. I believe the model is 1550. Um, generally, I use this case when I'm locally uh, shooting or regionally. Basically, if I'm driving and I don't have to carry my gear, I'll use this guy. Um, for travel, I usually pack everything into a backpack setup. That's just easier to get around with. Um, this guy gets pretty heavy and it doesn't have wheels, unfortunately. So as we wrap this up, you can see with this gear that my main focus is not only to be comfortable and confident, with my equipment, it's to cover myself in case something happens to a piece of gear by having a backup. You just always have to have a backup if you want to make it in this business. We work so hard to attract the high profile clients and get hired on these photo shoots and it could only take one shoot, one shoot where your camera fails and without a backup, you're dead in the water. And guess what? That client you work so hard to attract most likely is not going to hire you again. So cover your rear end on that. Um, just too much work goes in, into the process to lose it by, by not having an effective backup. And when I say backup too, you can maybe, you know, if you're shooting the D850, you could have a 750, just something else you can fall back to to get the job done and, you know, where the resolution and everything is comparable. And so things just are not a complete, complete loss. Okay, I think that just about does it for this video. I hope some of you found it informative and possibly just a little entertaining. If you have an idea of some things you'd like me to cover, please feel free to leave me in the comments and maybe we can get to them in the future. I think I've got around 150 followers on here, so it's pretty much a guarantee that I'm going to see uh, any and all requests, so don't be shy. You can find me also on Instagram and Twitter at Quants Photo. Uh, click the thumbs up if you're inspired by this video. I understand that greatly helps the circulation of these videos. Comment, subscribe, bell. Maybe we can make a little community here, and I'll be here for the next one. Too tall. <laughs> Way too short. Have a chair that'll work. Let's do this.